A looming government shutdown looking more likely this weekend. The deadline now just six days away. In a shocking move, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy sent Republicans home this weekend. Republicans gridlocked, unable to pass a single funding provision this past week. McCarthy all but abandoning his push for a continuing resolution to temporarily keep the government funded as negotiations continue. With that, let's bring in Congressman Brian Stile, Chair of the House Administration Committee. Congressman, like always, good to see you. Good to see you. At this point, on a scale of 1 to 10, how close are we to a government shutdown? You know, I'm optimistic that at the end of the day, we're going to get there. It's sometimes darkest before the dawn, and that's where we're at right now. But hopefully, cooler heads will prevail. You're inside these negotiations. What's happening behind closed doors at this moment? Well, we're having lots of conversations about how we get there. We're way behind on the appropriations bills. Both the House and the Senate are in the same position on that, which may force us into a position where we fund the government for a short period of time until we get the work done. It's beyond frustrating. We shouldn't be here, but hopefully we can prevent a government shutdown. I was going to say 11 appropriation bills in what will be, what, five to six days? Is that even possible at this point? I, I don't know that we'll be able to get every single one of them done, but this is one of those moments where I think we need to move the appropriations bills forward. The Senate has to do the same. Uh, we may have to buy ourselves a little bit of extra time. We're better to do that than shut the government down. That's just unproductive and it's something we've seen Washington do far too often. What do you make of this group of Republicans holding this up, opposing any stopgap, and, and what have you told them? Well, anytime you have a narrow majority, as we do in the House right now with a five-seat majority, people are going to be leveraging for their positions. But at the end of the day, as we approach the deadline here, hopefully cooler heads prevail and we're able to make sure that we're funding the government. Far too much is on the line to allow any individual uh, alone uh, to stop this process. You mentioned a CR, a continuing resolution. It looks like the Senate could weigh in at this point, sending the House a bipartisan resolution to keep the government funded temporarily. That, though, would likely include Ukraine funding and disaster relief. Is that something you would vote for at this point? We're going to have to look at what comes over. If it does come over from the Senate, it would be far better to send the Senate a House bill uh, which would claw back some of the reckless spending and secure the U.S.-Mexico border. Those would be my priorities. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're all going to have to come together to address the fact uh, that time is running out. At this point, does the speaker have two options, either begin to work with Democrats or go to toward a government shutdown? No, I think there's a third path, and I think that's getting Republicans to come together. Failure to do that would force us to the left. I think there's still a true opportunity uh, in the days ahead that we could really address the reckless spending and secure the U.S.-Mexico border uh, and buy us the time to truly do these appropriations bills uh, in an appropriate way. We didn't see that this past week. What could possibly change in the week ahead to get Republicans united? Uh, unfortunately, in Washington, there's nothing like a deadline to get people to get their work done. I feel like sometimes it's a bunch of college students in Washington waiting to the final hour. It's no way to run a railroad. The whole process is broken and needs to be rewritten. That said, often just before the deadline is when a deal is struck. Congressman Brian Stile, a busy weekend and a busy week ahead, Chair of the House Administration Committee. Hey, we appreciate your time and perspective. Thanks for having me on. Let's bring in the Secretary from the Department of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Mr. Secretary, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to be with you. Let's begin with this immediate impact. You're looking to the airline industry, specifically air traffic controllers. If this shutdown happens, uh, how immediate is this impact and, and what is the scope from your perspective? Well, if there's a government shutdown, it would immediately stop us from training air traffic controllers at the very moment when we need to have more, not fewer people in those positions. We've made enormous progress with the aviation system, especially compared to what we saw a year ago. Cancellations are finally back down to normal. They're actually a little bit below what they were in 2019. But this would not help. As a matter of fact, this would move us in the wrong direction. Given what you have just outlined, what role then do you think the administration should have in either facilitating conversations or pushing Democrats to work with the Republicans in the House, moderate Republicans, to reach some type of agreement if there are conservative holdouts? Well, it seems like right now the biggest issue is Republicans being willing to work with each other. But uh, one way or the other, they, they have to come up with a way to move forward. We have some very deep differences here in direction and in opinion. But the most important thing right now seems to be for House Republicans to settle their differences among themselves. There is the Republican infighting. What role do Democrats have in coming to the table at, at this moment before the 30th? 
Well, uh, look, uh, House and Senate Democrats have uh, made clear that they are ready to move forward uh, on uh, the, the legislation that's needed. Uh, look, uh, our administration is ready to work with anybody who's serious, uh, but we need these House Republicans to get serious, to get their act together, to settle their differences among each other uh, so that we can work across the aisle to see this through before there's a shutdown that would just be so uh, damaging to our economy and so completely unnecessary. Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Secretary, thank you so much for your time and perspective. Thank you. Up next, Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson, the Brewers funding plan and his reelection announcement next.